During the Second World War, if the Germans captured a female Soviet soldier, then orders were given to execute them on sight. The Soviets allowed women into the Red Army, especially following the heavy losses after the initial stages of Operation Barbarossa. Initially women who wanted to serve were turned away, but Stalin changed his mind and women saw action in a number of different ways. The Germans saw the women as an attack on their way of life and the traditional values instilled into German society by the Nazi party. They saw the use of women as a backwards policy of Bolshevism, but one of the most famous roles Soviet women had was snipers. Female snipers claimed around 11,000 lives of German soldiers and officers during World War II, and they were greatly feared, but when they were found, they were dealt with horrifically. Today we look at a female sniper who was executed in barbaric fashion. So join us as we look at the brutal execution of Tatiana Baramzina. Remember as always to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. Born on the 19th of December 1919 into a large family, Tatiana Baramzina was the second youngest of six children. Her family were Russian merchants and her father did different jobs to earn money, from fishing and repairing boats to building structures. Her mother baked bread and sold it at the local market and the family did not have much money. At some point her family broke up and her parents separated and then her father died in 1931 when Tatiana was around 11. Her mother struggled to cope with the financial problems the family were in, but Tatiana did finish secondary school in the 1930s. She once had wished to become a pilot and dreamed of doing so, but then she wished to work as a teacher and she worked gaining experience in a number of village schools. She then was given a teaching position at a school in Kach Kashur after she graduated from teacher training college in July 1939. However, before this she had joined the local Komsomol, the youth group and detachment of the Communist Party. During the Second World War, the Komsomol performed a number of different duties. Many members built infrastructure, worked in fields and contributed inside of the factories to the Soviet war effort. Baron Zina worked hard within the group and then became a pioneer leader, alongside being a teacher, leading a small detachment of the Komsomol. She wished to study more about education, but following funding cuts she was forced to leave another university before becoming a teacher of the kindergarten. Now when the Second World War broke out, it looked as if the Soviets and the Nazis would be free from conflict after the Molotov-Ribbentrop Pact was signed, which aimed to secure peace for 10 years. This ultimately didn't last long, as following territorial gains and invasions of Poland and France, Hitler turned his attention east towards the Balkans and the Soviet Union. The German army and their Axis allies rampaged through the Balkan states and then headed towards the Soviet Union in 1941. The invasion codenamed Operation Barbarossa began, and for the Germans initially it was rather successful, as the Wehrmacht rolled through Soviet territory, causing chaos and taking huge amounts of land. Because of the initial Soviet losses and the fact a huge amount of soldiers were wounded and killed, Stalin reversed his initial decision to allow women to join the Red Army and to take up arms. Many German generals saw this as a great offence and as a barbaric and backwards policy of Bolshevism, with Germans preferring more traditional values, and Hitler had instilled less progressive duties for women, forcing them back into the home and encouraging them to have as many children as possible and to serve their husbands. So with women inside of the Red Army, this was seen as a great shock. German generals because of this issued decrees and orders that any woman found fighting for the enemy or in uniform should be shot on sight or hanged from a tree. Thousands of women did take up arms in the Red Army to help out and fight against the enemy. Tatiana Baramzina signed up on a sixth month nursing course and attempted to enlist in the military, however she was initially refused entry into the army. But she went on to take part in a number of military courses and in particular was noted for her success in a sharpshooting course and she graduated with honours for this, being noted for her skills with a rifle. Baramzina then joined the Central Women's Sniper Training School in June 1943 to learn fully how to become a sharpshooter and a sniper. After graduating she then was deployed into service as a sniper within the 252nd Rifle Regiment. She arrived on the front lines on the 3rd of April 1944 with the Soviets pushing the Germans back at this stage of the war. Within a week she made her first kill with her sniper rifle 
and then she managed to rack up a kill count of 16 enemy soldiers, picking them off at a distance. There was an issue though, as she was suffering from bad eyesight, and because of this she left her role as a sniper, but wished to stay inside of the military. Baramzin then transitioned into becoming a telephone operator, and she was tasked with repairing damaged communication and telephone wires close to the front lines. This was a very dangerous job, and she would often do this under heavy enemy fire and artillery. In May 1944 she detected that the German army were approaching from the rear of her battalion, and she managed to warn her commander of this, and despite the commander dying in battle, Baramzina helped to lead a counter-attack facing the enemy. She continued to work in the Red Army repairing telephone wires under heavy pressure, and during one battle, was forced to repair the command post telephone wires 14 times, because of the brutal artillery barrage fired from the enemy. During Operation Bagration, the decisive victory for the Red Army that battered the German army, in just 23 days the Red Army advanced around 500 kilometers, and they inflicted huge losses on the German army, but at a cost to the Soviets. The 70th Infantry Division made a small assault force to block west routes that the Germans could use as a way to retreat. The Red Army prepared for their advance on the 4th of July 1944, and Baram Zina, initially not chosen to be part of the advancing group, managed to convince her commander to let her go, saying she would be useful as a sniper and also a medic. The group started off well, taking a crossing at Pekelin, a small village, and they then waited for the retreating German army, who would have been disorganised and not expecting an assault. It came and the Red Army artillery battered the Germans from both sides as they arrived near the village, and the Germans with nowhere to go fought bravely and intensely. They would not give up, and eventually managed to oust the Soviets from the village for a few hours. There were a great degree of Soviet soldiers injured, and Baramzina was very busy tending to the wounded. Many of them had hidden themselves in a grain field to hide, and were inside a dugout, which had been taken from the Germans initially. Baramzina joined them and tended to the badly injured, and she placed herself in danger, and it was likely that the Germans would attack once more. She had a chance to leave the dugout and to sneak out using the rye field, but refused to do so. The Germans at the time were too busy trying to escape the Soviets who were surrounding them, to search a forest or the grain field, but whilst tending to the wounded soldiers, the German army came across the dugout. Tatiana Baramzina had to make a decision, flee or protect those soldiers who were injured. The Germans approached the dugout, and she grabbed a machine gun from one of the soldiers and waited. As the German soldiers ran towards the dugout, she managed to shoot dead three soldiers, and she opened up with her machine gun until she ran out of ammunition. She continued to throw grenades and fire anything she could at the enemy, but before she could inflict more damage, two German soldiers entered the dugout from behind and threw grenades at her, and Baramzina injured was captured. She was dragged out of the dugout, and then the injured soldier she was protecting was shot dead inside. So Tatiana was dragged out of the dugout, and then her brutal execution came about very shortly afterwards. The German soldiers began to torture her for information, and they took their bayonets out, and began to stab and mutilate her with their knives. They then took out their rifles and began to smash her over the head with their rifle butts. Then the final humiliation came for Tatiana Baramzina. One of the soldiers took out an anti-tank rifle, an incredibly powerful weapon that was designed to penetrate the armour of tanks and armoured fighting vehicles. These weapons were incredibly powerful and shot through steel. One of the soldiers took out the anti-tank rifle and took aim at Baramzina's head. He then fired a shot into her skull, instantly killing her. The damage would have been immense, but a few hours later the 70th Infantry Division found her remains after they successfully completed their mission to take out the Germans who were retreating. Her remains were then interred in a mass grave in Volmar and were later moved in 1963. But Tatiana's execution was one which was common with captured female Soviet soldiers. Once they were captured, many German soldiers mutilated them before executing them in horrific ways. Tatiana Baramzina was only 24 when she was executed in horrific fashion by the German soldiers. She was a skilled sniper who racked up an impressive kill count before she transferred across to being a medic. She wished to remain inside the Red Army and she rose to the rank of corporal and was later awarded the Hero of the Soviet Union, the highest award for citizens of the Soviet Union. 
She was one of many women executed by the Germans who fought in the Red Army, but the teacher who became a sniper wanted to help the war effort. The story of Tatiana Baranzina is a very interesting one, but a sad one, as decisions were taken to execute her in particularly barbaric fashion. Once again, thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe, and once again, thank you so much for watching.